There is a little known principle and a little known study, a little known application that is actually growing rapidly around the world right now, and it's called permaculture. But the principle is not called permaculture. The principle is one of the principles within permaculture. And permaculture is the field of growing food, working with nature and the natural environments. Now, I have a message that I say nature is the answer, and a lot of people can agree with that. But we have to be practical. We have to put it in action. And this is a principle that, although a lot of people have not identified, a lot of people have not said necessarily, a lot of people practice on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, we can't really escape it because it's everywhere around us. Nature does it on its own. And that is the idea of stacking functions, of being integrative. And you can see this when you have multiple physicians looking at your health. You can see this when you have multiple nutrients contributing to your body. You can see this with everything in society, how everything stacks as functions, all operating as one system. But when we're conscious of this and we're aware of this, now we can tap into that and use that ability within our lives. And so this is a lot of like strategies that you hear nowadays, something you have to apply, something you have to study, but really it's everywhere. You can't escape it. What I mean is when you cook, you can realize that all the nutrients and all the flavors have to work together. Otherwise the dish isn't going to come out right. And so the more conscious you are of, let's say the silverware you use and the plate and the, the environment and the people you're around and every little aspect, the more that dish is going to not only taste good, but everything else will also be good in abidance to the dish. And this is fulfilling harmony. This is fulfilling order within the world. People want to know, how do we create a better world? Well, it's by being more conscious of everything we do, which is why people are like, you got to pay attention to this. You got to pay attention to that. You got to pay attention to this. And then over time, it comes to be too much. But really, it's all about integration. And integration is simply adding in. It doesn't mean add it all at once. It doesn't mean you have to pay attention to everything around you. It means that what you are doing now in the present, you focus on that right now. So if you're trying to sleep, you sleep. <laughs> you're not thinking about the day ahead or the day after that. And hey, we're all a prone to, you know, looking at all the different things and all the distractions and advertisements getting our attention constantly throughout the day. We're all constantly bombarded by a bunch of different things. So it's very easy to fall into the trap of not being present, which then makes it actually harder for us to integrate all those things we're worried about. <laughs> and those worries drag on our present worries that we actually can't focus on what we're trying to do right now. We're focused on something that hasn't even existed yet. We're focused on some sort of abstraction, right? So we want to stay present and we want to stay focused and we want to also be able to be conscious. So how could we do that? How can we zoom in on the painting, see the details of the painting while being able to zoom back and see the whole painting for what it is? It's that very in and out motion that you see in all of life as well, and that you can call another principle. In Hermeticism, they call that the principle of correspondence, of polarity, of rhythm. And so we are constantly going through our lives, needing energy, re then replenishing that energy, you know, get, losing that energy, replenishing that energy, losing that energy. It's just this constant cycle. These cycles keep going through us, but we are on this tide and we're flowing and we need to be able to flow. In Taoism, in ancient Chinese philosophy, they call that Wu Wei, being able to flow. Like water, getting past all the, the, the burdens and all the hurdles within our life. And I talk about these concepts because it has to do with being integrative, seeing the rock in front of you and saying, I don't have to take that path and I'm conscious of it so I can move down another path. I'm working with what I'm given and I'm looking at the whole scenario. So I'm not just predestined and determined to hit the rock. I don't have to hit the rock. I don't have to be like, oh, darn it. I can't continue. <laughs> No, you're going to say, I can continue because I always see a way out of it. I always see a new light in that dark cavern. I'm not stuck in the dark. But it's very easy to get stuck when you don't open your mind to see the possibilities. And this is why some people take like shrooms and, you know, different <laughs> substances to help them see more of reality because they've been stuck for so long 
that they don't know how to be integrative anymore, how to stack functions. So when you decorate, do the same thing. I mean, many people, they want to throw these simple, basic, fundamental needs out of life, such as love or happiness. They know they want it, but they overstep it. They're not grateful. They don't realize how important it is in their life until they lose it, until something happens. But the more conscious you are of it and the more aware of it, you then integrate it within your life more. You realize, okay, this is why I have it. I want to keep it. So when you're decorating, I mentioned that, it's very important to recognize that it's not just, oh, it's decoration. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It definitely does matter what it looks like. The room around me, what I wear and what I look like matters a lot to my health, to my own happiness, to other people, their health, their happiness. And it's not something to just easily permit and say, well, we shouldn't care at all. Everything we should actually care about. And then equally so, we should be able not to care about. Because if we're really integrative, we'll see both sides of the coin. We'll see like, okay, you should be yourself and not worry what people think, but also you should care about, you know, what other people think. And that tricky balance has some people just falling for either end. And then they fall to an imbalance and then they can't be integrative. And then they can't be able to flow. But being able to flow says, I'm not in that box. I'm not in that box. I'm not with this title. I'm not with this title. I'm not with this attachment nor this attachment. So it's like, what's your favorite color? Well, I kind of like all the colors. Well, I want an answer from you. I'm sorry. I can't really give you an answer because I see life from a holistic perspective. Unless you see all your options, you can't integrate one or the other in the time where it is due. Let's say you need a certain medication at a certain time, a certain herb, a certain plant. Well, you're not going to know what plant or herb to use in that time unless you really understand the right time. So you need to be able to have a bigger worldview. You need to be able to see all your options. You need to be able to see time and place, I would call it, right? Your place and time. And again, that relies on the present. So everything you do, working toward one another type of thing. If you're playing video games, if you're reading a book, if you're watching a video, is that video, is that book, is that game going to contribute to something else in your life? Now, let's say you are doing that. You say, oh, well, it's just to keep me distracted in a good sense, or it's going to just get me away from this busy world because I'm always working all the time. So I just need to turn off my brain for a bit. You feel like it's part of the balance. Okay, great. But maybe it can still help you while you're resting, while you're relaxing, because we have to be careful. A lot of people might work all day, go home, sit on the couch, watch TV. The TV now is totally unloading at them a bunch of subconscious messages that they're not able to consciously perceive. So it just goes into them and they don't they're unaware of how it's affecting their brain, how it's affecting their psyche. And then they end up with dreams and they're like, man, how did I end up with this crazy dream? Like, I don't understand. They don't understand their dream because, well, they either weren't present during the dream or they didn't understand what affected or what, you know, really led to that dream. It could have been the hundreds of symbols they saw on television. Programming, it programs your mind, right? And that's regardless of what's on TV, whether it's good or bad. It's something that is programming your mind. I'm programming your mind right now. I'm somebody speaking to you and getting you to think. <laughs> so I can say all I want, like, oh, I'm trying to open your mind. I'm trying to help you see new things, but I'm also technically programming you. Everybody's programming each other all the time. And so just simply be integrative with it, right? Realize, okay, you're watching this because it's going to help you in, in regards to seeing more in your life. It's working towards something. You're not just doing it for no reason. Everything in nature happens for a reason. A lot of people want to say, well, it just happens. Like, you know, we have this part of our body we can just take out. And it's not a big deal. The wisdom teeth, oh, they're just wisdom teeth. Well, now there's actually studies that prove that there's actually cancer cells, like anti-cancer cells in your wisdom teeth, but people are being having them taken out. So, you know, that kind of stinks. And there's also studies saying, well, you know, maybe we shouldn't be doing all these weird things like, you know, vaccinating for chicken pox. Or maybe chicken pox is good for our immune system. Like, you know, we, we, we find this out when we take in other factors. But if we do a study and we're biased and we only look at certain factors, yeah, we're going to get a certain result. And then we end up 20, 30 years later regretting it because we weren't actually integrative. And so it just tells you how much humanity needs to be conscious if you actually want a good outcome in the end. 
a good evolutionary destiny of progress. It means, you know, we need to take a step back, I often say. A return to nature just means take a step back, like be able to say, okay, well, where am I stepping next? So next time you, you know, set the table for dinner <laughs> for the family, right? And hopefully, you know, you have people to, to eat with. Hopefully, you know, you're creating those environments and you're being integrative. So those things aren't just like, oh, it's fine. I'll just deal with it. I'm by myself. You can become content, but realize you can have all these different factors. If you see they should be there, bring them together. Realize that table setting could be beautiful, can inspire you to eat in, in such a way where you want to eat, you know, the, the spices on the food, the garnish. I mean, there's a reason why they do that in restaurants. There's a reason why and how they're able to get people to spend tons of money. There's a reason why on TV they put certain ads with certain images and they pump it out everywhere because it works. And so when you realize symbolism and the words we use and everything in reality affects us, then you will become integrative in every single way to realize that everything should work with your principles, which I hope you would have, which is those things that are pretty much unalterable. Those things that you know you live your life by. Like, I love family. I, I love myself. I want to take care of my health. You know, I want to live long or I want to create abundance. You know, I want to be free. And if these are principles for you, then it's all about creating the environment to allow those principles to manifest on their own, just as a permaculturalist, you know, in, in growing food would set up the environment so the food grows itself. And so it's the least amount of effort for you having to grow the food. The food grows itself. And since everything in nature grows by itself and works together, you're simply working with your body to help it express itself. So rather than watching a video and having someone tell you what you should do, how you should look like, you go into yourself and you find out, okay, I'm going to learn from them and I'm going to learn from myself, not one or the other. And if I'm looking for an answer to something, I'm not going to depend on that thing for my answer. I'm not going to have a medium get between me and the thing that I actually want from the medium. Say, a lot of people want happiness, so they get money or they have a material thing for happiness. That happiness is the end goal. They have a thing in the middle. That's what I mean by a medium. Even philosophy, oh, it's to attain knowledge. There's knowledge at the end of it. There's philosophy in the middle. We can get stuck on the philosophy end of it and actually not attain knowledge. As you see, many people will go into hour-long conversations about philosophy, and then they get lost, and then the average person's like, what? What are they talking about? You know, like, like, could you speak in common sense, like actual, real human language? They alienate themselves by getting stuck in their man-made things, in their perceptions of what reality is, when we can literally live with a reality that grows abundantly of itself as all plants do when they're put into the right soil when they're in the right environment and that's it you don't have to convince someone that something is true they can convince themselves setting up the right environment but we underestimate our environment and those little things in life that can make all the difference and that really is one of the most secret yet most powerful and abundant strategies I think there is on this earth is simply seeing the integrative function, the stacking of functions in all regards of life. Thank you very much for watching. Definitely look into permaculture if you haven't heard of it. And I'm also an integrative nutrition health coach, so I guess that's something to put on top of this. But um, you have to do it in health as well. And we see it's one of the best approaches because it's not secluded to one diet or one way of doing things. We're able to look at an individual and address them from where they currently are. Such a beautiful way to look at the world. It doesn't put ourselves in a box. It opens our potential to freedom and to all the different options available so we can best work with ourselves. Thank you very much for watching.